Eleanor Roosevelt, Betty Ford, and Michelle Obama. Certainly among the many fascinating women to occupy the White House. Leslie Stahl is talking with the stars portraying these three remarkable first ladies. Michelle Pfeiffer plays Betty Ford. The ERA has never been concerned with making women the same as men, just equal to. I didn't know how much she had done behind the scenes and how really politically active she actually was. Viola Davis plays Michelle Obama. In four years, I don't want to look back and think, what did I become living in that house? She came into the relationship with her own agency and autonomy. And then all of a sudden, she sort of had to trade it in, you know, to become first lady. Add some hope to it, but he needs to state the facts plain and simple. There are 30 million Americans out of work, and they don't want to be pandered to. Gillian Anderson plays Eleanor Roosevelt. I had admired her for such a long time. I didn't quite understand why they asked me. I'm five foot three, and she was close to six foot. And I kept saying, are you sure? Like, <laughs> yeah, but really? you don't look teeny on television. Yeah. But I fell so in love with her in the process and was so glad that I said yes. The portraits of these first ladies will air in a 10-part series on Showtime, a division of CBS's parent company, Paramount Global. Don't push me off. I am your wife, not one of your girlfriends. At first glance, these first ladies seem to have little in common. I have done everything I was supposed to do! But even though they all obviously existed in different historical times, one of the really strong themes that runs throughout the series is finding their voice, their struggle to be heard. So you let him off. He accepted the pardon. That is an admission of guilt. Without consequences for his actions. I was surprised and frankly thrilled that so much of this series takes place in the bedrooms, where the intimacy of the first family is portrayed for us. And I just want to go through some of the scenes that stick out in my mind. And one, uh, Michelle, is when uh, Jerry Ford pardons Nixon, mm. and Betty is livid. It's Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's the angriest that we see her. Yeah, you were seething. You know that this makes us look complicit, don't you? Like we're part of the cover-up. She had made a promise to the American people that this family would always be truthful. And I think she held Jerry to such a higher standard that she really, really believed in her mind that he was going to do the right thing. And um, I don't... Because Jerry thought he was doing the right thing. Well, he thought he was doing the right... Mm, he thought he was doing the... Well... <laughs> he thought he was healing the country. And he knew he it was going to hurt him politically. But she was offended. Because she felt that it, it tainted the family, the honor of the family, and the integrity of the, of the family. I'm saying that I can contribute. And I'm saying, with all due respect, that you're not qualified. Excuse me? I don't want you to become a liability to your husband, is all. But you were more than happy to pit me out during the campaign. The campaign is over. This is politics. In more behind-the-scenes moments, the series takes some dramatic license. Viola, one of the scenes that keeps resonating in my mind was how hostile the relationship between Michelle Obama and Rahm Emanuel was. I didn't realize it was that intense. Well, I think we took liberties. I actually don't believe that Michelle would, you know, cuss out Rahm Emanuel. I think that um, Michelle stayed in her lane. Well, if Michelle would stay in her lane, why was the decision made that she would not be portrayed that way? Because you know that once you get to that White House as the first black president and the first black lady, you know what you're up against. What? R Rom thinks that... Stop right there. You tell your work wife that your actual wife said to stay out of our family business. Got it. Now I have two wives and neither of them are happy. It's like the famous quote, we wear the mask that grins and lies. 
So I'm saying that there is a protocol that Michelle is aware of. But with Rom, we took some liberties. We did, for dramatic purposes. Three, two, one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You see each of the first ladies grow in their public roles. She hated public speaking. The cabinet is convening. And yet she did it anyway. She really, really believed that what she had to say was so much more important than anything that was going on for her and her fears and her self-doubt. My doctor uh, advised me that the source of my pain, it was actually much deeper. And he thought it might be a good idea for me to see a psychiatrist. What was the moment when you said, I get this woman. And it was. I can play her. I saw my mother in her. And I was very moved by that, by women of that generation. Revolutions were happening all around them, but they had made a pact already to really live for their husband's ambitions and fulfillments and support them. And all of a sudden, the rules of the game change on them, and they were too far in to reverse course. It was so terrible to have a black family in this house that they elect him. Th this is not about us. Isn't it? In a way, Viola Davis had the greatest challenge. Everyone knows who Michelle Obama is. They know what she looks like. They know what she sounds like. They love her. If she had been dead for 100 years, <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Mm, I um, do know and, exactly and, what you're and saying. And it behooved me to look at her behavior, her hands, mm. how she holds her pearls, how she holds her lips. It's like all of that work before I could even get to what happened in the White House. You are going to be a dope first lady. Viola Davis feels a special responsibility for the series. Fashion shoots, gardening. You want me to be roasted alive as being elitist and out of touch? She's one of the executive producers. Tell us how it came about and why you wanted to do it. Why I wanted to do it in the beginning and then why I wanted to do it <laughs> once I got on the set where I'm like, why the hell did I want to do this? I wish I had a better answer. It's a chance for um, women to play roles that are complicated. And who these women were beyond you know, the images that we saw on television, I was like, are you kidding me? We can get these really awesome actresses every single season, and they'll have the ability to shine. So there will be more seasons with new casts of first ladies shining more light on the struggles, emotions, and influence of these important figures in American history. They really are the unsung heroes, working behind the scenes, and working for social justice, they had the courage to really listen to what they felt was just. 